Hi, everybody. I'm Dave from the Polypad team, and I am excited to share with you our Polypad updates for April 2024. Here I am at polypad.amplify.com, and the first update I want to share with you is connecting cubes. So it's under the number section, under numbers, tiles, and cubes. Let me drag one out to the canvas, zoom in a bit. And these cubes snap together really nicely, just like you'd expect connecting cubes to do. I could uh, take this stack and copy it, add another one here. There's also on a, on a stack of these connecting cubes, there's a plus button to add more cubes. There's a minus button to take cubes away. If I double click on a stack, a cube gets pulled off uh, the end. I could stick a cube in the back. I can stick a cube on the front. Uh, if I put a cube anywhere here, it'll get added into that, uh, into the front or the end of, of the stack. Uh, I could rotate it with this rotate button or use the rotate handle. And then if at any point, if you have uh, more than 10 cubes on the canvas, so let me put a bunch here on the canvas. And if you select all of them, when it's more than 10, an Organize button is going to appear. And when I click Organize, it's going to put the connecting cubes into rows of 10. So I'll click this button, and you can see I get a stack of 10, and then uh, some at the bottom. I just merge those together. Let me hit Undo for a moment. And so you can see here's a stack of 8 and a stack of 10. And when I put them on top of each other, that was this Merge button, which makes them into a single into a single stack. I can hit organize to get it back into two separate groups. Uh, so those are the connect cubes. Again, just like any tile on Polypad, if you have a question about it, click on this question mark in the action bar, and it'll take you to a tutorial section on those tiles. So there's the section on the connect cubes. Wonderful. Uh, the next update I want to share with you is new area animations on our polygon. Let me turn on the grid menu just to, to demonstrate this. I'm going to add a rectangle to the canvas. I'll zoom in a little bit. And let me make this a uh, two by four rectangle. And so you may know we, we have a play button on polygons. It starts playing the perimeter. Which is really nice. Uh, but one of the new the, the new feature for April is four options for area animation. So the first one I'm going to choose is area and, and uh, units. That says area uh, units in the dropdown. When I play this one, I'm going to turn the tempo up a little bit just to speed it up in this video. So now I'll push play. You can see it's filling in the square units of that shape. Awesome. I can change it from units to rows. Now it's going gonna, it's gonna to animate and play the rows. Uh, I can change it to columns. Or I can show continuous area. Awesome. And uh, finally, I'll go back to the square units, and I'm going to turn on the label toggle. You can see this toggle here of show labels. And when I do that, I see the area, uh, the area of eight units squared appears as well. This works for all of our polygons. So I could go to a hexagon and change the animation to area and units. I'll turn the tempo a little bit up and push play. You can see that it uh, shows the square units as much as possible. Uh, if I make this hexagon a lot bigger, let me apply a scale factor of three to it. It gets really big. And now when I play it, uh, let me turn the tempo up a little bit just to speed it up, given that it's a larger shape. And I'll push play. Awesome. And I can turn on the labels as well. Let's do show labels and see this area. You can see at the bottom that is those, those um, rectangles or trapezoids even have a height of 0.2. Again, you can turn that off if you don't want to see the labels. So really excited about those new options to show area. And again, that works with all of the polygons. One other update with polygons to share with you, which I'll demo with a hexagon and a square. Let me make a few copies of this. So I'm going to make three copies of that. I'm just using the C button 
on my keyboard to make those copies. Um, we have two new options for what you can do with multiple polygons. So we've had a join option for a while that would make a single polygon out of those two. We've changed that name from join to union. So I click union and it makes a single polygon. If I select these both and do the intersection, it will just show where they overlap like that. Uh, and then I can also do the difference to show where they don't overlap. And of course, uh, those two, the intersection and the difference make the union. Uh, so all sorts of fun ideas, really looking forward to see how, uh, how people engage with union, intersection, and difference. And the final option is a way to show a variable in a text box. So let me add a variable to the screen with the equation editor. I'm going to type uh, a equals 10. Let me zoom in a little bit more to make this bigger. So there is a text box with a equals 10. Uh, that's an equation, excuse me, that I built with the equation editor. But then in a text box, I can get the value of a variable to appear. So I can type the value of a is, and I don't want to just put 10 because if I change a, I want my text box to update as well. So the Keystrokes I need to use are dollar sign, bracket, A, close bracket. And when I click out of this text box, I'm still in the text box, as you can see the cursor, that's going to change to 10. There we go. Uh, but I can do other, other math uh, operations inside of there. So I could say the value of 2A is that, and that would become 20. I could say the value of a times a, and here I could even write a raised to the second power, and that's 100. And what's really nice is if I change this value of a, let's change it to 7, all of those are going to update as well. Uh, but I can do this with a variable slider as well. So if I go to the algebra section and add on an a slider down here, you can see I'm now getting uh, this warning message because I've defined a in multiple places. a is 7. And here A is zero, so uh, I get that nice message. So if, if I delete this one, now it's evaluating it for A is zero. I can change uh, what I want this range to be. Maybe let's go from negative 20 to 20, and let's have the increment just be whole numbers. So let's make that one. And now as I push play on the slider, those values change in real time. I could stop at a certain number, I could go over here and I could say, huh, anything we notice and wonder about those values, that's maybe going a little quick. So I could slow down uh, the duration. I'm increasing the duration. That's how long it takes for the slider to move across. The, uh, to move across. You can see now that it's a longer duration. It's taking a longer time for it to go across, uh, which is nice. So uh, maybe some good. Notice and wonderings that we could do here about 2a versus a squared. All right, so those are the April updates. We can uh, show the values of variables in text boxes. We have union, intersection, and difference for polygons. We have some new animations for the area of polygons and snap cubes, which I think I deleted from the canvas. So uh, exciting April updates. Would love to see how you use them in exploring mathematics. Please share that in the comments of this video or across any of our social media channels. Thanks for watching.